welcome to Splash Studio Online Edition. My name is Alyssa and I'm going to be taking you guys step by step through this lovely painting we call Harvest Moon. Uh, this one is kind of one of my favorites. It's got a lot of really fun colors. It's really nice um, to just kind of hang in any room of your house. Um, it's a favorite for a lot of people. So I'm really excited to paint this with you guys today. Um, so whether you guys got the kit from Splash or not, I'm going to go over some of your materials that you have. Um, if you just have a canvas, some brushes, and paint lying around at home, you guys can obviously still follow along with the video as well. You don't necessarily have to get the kit, but we do encourage it. Um, so one thing you are going to need, obviously, is a canvas. So if you did get the kit, you should have received an 11 by 14 canvas. Um, and that is true to what this painting is normally taught on. Um, so everything will be normal and there shouldn't be any adjusting of any sort of size. Um, you guys should have gotten a set of brushes. Um, they're wrapped around a rag. This will be helpful throughout the session. Um, but the brushes that you guys have, you should have a large flat brush, a medium round brush, or a medium flat brush, very sorry, medium round brush, and then a detailed brush. So you guys should have four, and you guys are gonna wanna stick those in a water cup right away, which once again, you could either have received or if you just have a solo cup, whatever, laying around, totally fine. You guys are gonna wanna grab a palette. Um, this is just a plain old paper plate. Totally works fine. If you guys have something a little fancier, feel free to use that as well. And then obviously you guys are going to want to get paint. Um, so once again, if you got the kit, your paint should have came in these little kind of containers. Um, but if you just have paint laying around too, that's great. And feel free throughout this entire thing, if you want to change any of the colors, definitely go ahead and do so. I'm just going to be showing you, um, you know, how the original was created. So to start off this painting, um, we're going to be focusing on the background. Um, so it's very kind of ombre effect um, going on. We've got some dark blue and then it transitions all the way into a yellow. Um, so we're going to focus going from top to bottom. Uh, so we're going to want to mix up a dark blue color to begin with. So I'm going to be using my large flat brush. So that's the biggest brush that you should have. start this ombre effect. Uh, like I said, we're going to be making a dark blue color. So that's going to be blue. We're going to be mixing a little bit of black into it as well. So grabbing some blue, just picking a spot on my palette to kind of mix it up. And um, we just want a little bit of black. Um, black is pretty overpowering. So I just want to get a nice dark blue color. Um, it almost might look kind of gray. But once we kind of have um, that color mixed up, uh, we're going to start, like I said, from top to bottom. And you're just going to go back and forth. And you're just going to work on filling that entire top half of the canvas. Um, if it helps, you can kind of make a line as to where you might want to stop this color um, once we transition down, down, down. Um, but it's completely up to you as to how much of this dark blue you guys want to add.
All right, guys, so once you have that dark, dark blue placed in there, um, what we're gonna do next is now we are going to start adding regular blue. Um, so it kind of works when the paint is still wet. You wanna make sure that um, it is still wet as we are transitioning colors. So once again, I'm gonna use the exact same brush, except this time I'm gonna just use the pure blue that I have. And I'm gonna go right into where I left off and kind of streak up into it and continue down. Um, so as you can kind of see, the lighting is a little weird, but I can show you guys up close. Um, but the blue just kind of starts transitioning um, right where you left off from the dark blue. So that's kind of the effect that you want to get, um, like I said, as we are transitioning colors. And this is just by keeping the paint wet or keeping your brushes wet. Um, it really just helps make it a lot smoother. Alright guys, so once you have that blue as far down as you want, I'll show you mine just to get a better look. Um, so you see that I kind of transitioned it, like I said, to a certain point. And now we are going to be making green will be the next color. Um, so once again, I'm not really going to rinse my brush off. Unless you have like a lot of paint on it, I don't think you really need to rinse your brush. But we're going to go ahead and we are going to use the green. And if you still have some blue on your brush, that's great. I'm just gonna kind of put it on my palette. And once again, we're gonna start where we'd had the blue and work our way down. And as you can see, since it's blending with the blue, it's almost kind of making it a bit of a teal color. So still just working. Going all the way down. Um, and like I said, this really depends. This really depends on um, you know how much green that you want. Um, some people like to have way more blue than green. That's why in this example, um, there's a lot more blue going on, and there's just a little bit of green and yellow. Like I said, it's really up to you how far down you guys want to go. And all the trees will be blocking a lot of this too, so keep that in mind. Alright, so then when you guys do think you are ready and you are done with the green layer, you can go ahead once again, and now we are going to be using yellow. I'm just going to dip my brush into the yellow, just how it is. Work on transitioning that down. You can kind of go up with it a little bit if you want. But we're creating a yellow, and as you'll see, um, mixed with the green, it makes a really nice effect at the bottom. Like it's all kind of bleeding into each other, which is ultimately the effect that you're going to want this to look like. And if you did get these little easel things, feel free to take your painting off of them and make sure that you get all sections of your canvas. So when you guys are all done, it should look something like this. So it should look pretty transitioned. Um, like I said, going from dark and then going to yellow, depending on how much of the colors that you guys is, that you guys added. Um, but as of right now, finish working on your background how you want it to look, and I would recommend taking about a 10 to 15 minute break just to let everything dry before we add the moon and all of the other things that go along with the painting. Alright guys, so for this next part of our painting, uh, we are going to be working on our moon. 
Um, so it's got a few different kind of colors within it, which is pretty cool, and we get to add a little bit of texture. Um, so to start off, we're going to be just making the moon yellow. Um, so I'm going to be using my medium round brush for that. So that's the one that looks just like this. And I'm going to be mixing up kind of like a lighter yellow color. Um, so that's just going to be yellow. And then mixing just a little bit of white into it. So yellow and white to create a light yellow. And now we're not going to be doing the texture quite yet. We're just kind of going to establish where we want our moon to be. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to be making as best of a circle as you can. Uh, you can make your moon as big as you want, as small as you want. It's completely up to you. Um, this one isn't completely centered. It's a little bit off to the left. So if you would like to do the same, you can. You can place it wherever you want. Like I said, I'm going to kind of stick with the painting. Choose a spot. And excuse me, I'm going to kind of go in front of my canvas a little bit. But basically, you're going to find a spot, make the best circle that you can. Um, it does not have to be perfect. Um, the moon isn't always full. If you wanted to do a half moon or something different, you guys totally can. But once you kind of do have that circle in place and where you want it and adjusted, then you guys can feel free to just fill it in with that yellow paint. Um, like I said, we'll be layering over it, so it does not have to look completely filled in or perfect. All right guys, so once you have your moon in place, it is exactly where you want it to be. Um, while the paint is still wet, we're gonna be adding in the different colors that you see on the moon, which are gonna be some oranges and reds. Um, so those are just going to basically be the colors how they are. Um, the orange, if you wanna lighten it a little bit or add some yellow to it, you guys definitely can. But like I said, once you kind of put it on here, it'll start to transition. And now the method that we're going to be doing for making um, a texture on the moon is we're actually going to be kind of dabbing our paint onto the canvas instead of using brush strokes. Um, so if you just kind of follow um, the pattern that I'm doing, I'm just kind of dabbing some orange all throughout. Um, and you'll kind of just feel out how much you want on there, what areas you want. But you want to keep some of that yellow on um, and also save some room for red. But just continue to use orange and do that dabbing motion and then once you feel like you have enough orange um, I kind of like to switch back and forth but then I'm going to do red um, so once again you can make the red a little bit lighter by either adding some orange or some yellow maybe even white to it depends kind of how you want it to look but with the red you're gonna stick to more so the outside of the moon you can transition it a bit into that orange um, just be kind of mindful as to where you ended the moon and make sure that that all blends together. Like I said, I like to go back and forth. Um, you can even go back into your yellow and add some more of that if you want to. Um, but this is completely up to you as to how much or how little of these colors that you want. Um, like I said, you can kind of pull the colors up higher or you can just keep them down here more. Um, completely up to you. But take this time to kind of figure out what you want your moon to look like.
awesome. So you guys, this moon should look something along the lines of this. Um, if not better than this. But like I said, I stuck with some red, kind of transitioned into orange, and then kept the top part yellow. I'm trying my best so you can see the texture of it. But yours should look somewhat similar to this. Um, so once you guys have that moon completed, we are going to add some stars, um, which are just kind of a few here and there in the sky. Um, this will be kind of our last Thing we're doing with the sky and then we will be doing the trees next. So I'm going to take my smallest detail brush and we're just going to be using pure white paint. Um, so there's two ways people like to add stars. Um, it's basically just putting little dots of white in the sky. Some people like to use just the normal method of using the tip of their brush, um, but other people actually find it very um, helpful to use the bottom part of your brush because um, if you dip it into the paint it tends to make a perfect circle um, so that is actually what I'm going to do and you're just going to want to place some stars throughout your painting um, kind of keeping more towards the top because we are going to have those trees but if you for some reason want to go all the way down with the stars you guys definitely can um, if you really want you can try and add a shooting star in there um, some other type of space all right guys, so if your sky is how exactly you want it to look, you have all your stars in place, moon looks good, we are going to move on um, to doing the ground and the trees. Um, so this is all gonna be in black, and I'm gonna be using my medium flat brush, so that looks just like this. So we're gonna be grabbing some black paint, and what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna first do the bottom half of where the ground is. Um, so once again, if you need to move this, if you have one of these, feel free to. But we're just kind of going to be making um, the bottom half black, so you can go up as high as you want. Um, but I'm just kind of going to make a pretty thick ground towards the bottom. I'm going to keep some yellow, um, so feel free to kind of just fill that in as to how high you want your ground to be. Alrighty, so once you guys have your ground how exactly you want it to look, we are going to start doing the trees. So I'm actually going to switch and use my medium round brush now. So we're still going to be using black and we are doing the simplest method possible of making these trees. Um, we're basically just going to be making the, um, the trunks of the tree to start off with. Um, before we add any leaves or anything like that. We're not even going to be adding branches to these trees um, because the method that I show you um, is kind of two for one. You're adding branches and leaves at the same time. Um, so what you're going to want to do is kind of eye out and place where you want each tree to be. You can add as many as you want, as few as you want. They can run off the canvas. They can go up high. They can all be down low. Completely up to you. But I'm going to start off by kind of doing my tallest tree, picking a spot, and just bringing it up to the point where I want that tree to end. Like I said, they don't have to be real thick. Um, they can be very skinny. But I think I'm gonna end my first tree there. And once you kind of have one mapped out, then you can start doing more. Maybe I'll put one down here that doesn't go up as high. And then start filling in the rest of my spots. So you guys are going to want to have a few, like I said, I'll show you mine up close. So I have a few placed out wherever I want them. And now using your same brush, um, we are going to be doing that technique that I was talking to you about where it's kind of 
Branches also mixed with leaves, and um, that's how the effect kind of looks. Um, once again, we're just using black paint. I like to start from top to bottom, but we're kind of be going, going to be going back and forth from left to right side. Um, these are kind of like pine trees, I would say almost. Um, so it's gonna be once again kind of a dabbing motion like we did with the moon. Um, but I'm gonna start just at the top. I'm just gonna dab a little on each side, dab a little on each side. And it's okay if it's kind of like choppy looking, spaced apart a bit. We're just gonna kind of keep doing that motion. Um, it's definitely good to have some gaps in between. But I will show you guys in just a second um, how mine looks after I finish this tree. You want some spaces in between it so it looks like, um, you know, you can still see the background and it's still that open sky. Alright guys, so I'll kind of show you how my tree looks. Um, just the first one. As you can kind of see, it's just kind of blotted around. Um, and then it goes kind of stretched out. I kind of left some gaps in between, but as you can see, this is kind of how the first tree looks. Um, they can all look very similar, you can make them look different, completely up to you. Alrighty guys, so once you're finished with your trees, I'll show you mine up close. So some of them kind of go into the background a little bit, but that's good because it's nighttime, so it's creating a shadow. Um, but yeah, like I said, you just want to kind of work on some spacing in between them. Um, I left some areas open, I left some trees to be more full. So it kind of depends on how you want these to look. Um, but the last step um, of this painting is to just add some final highlights on top of the leaves if you would like. Um, and this is just by making a kind of a dark gray color. So I'm just gonna use the exact same medium round brush that I had, mixing black with some white. So black with just a little bit of white in it. And then you're gonna go right on top of some of the leaves. You don't have to do all of them, um, but I kind of like to stick to the ones that are kind of more so by the moon. You're just going to kind of do that same thing right on top of the leaves. And this is just kind of creating a little bit of like a moonlight essence that is casted upon the trees. Um, but yeah, like I said, kind of stick to like the tops of the leaves and it does not have to be on all of them. I'm just kind of putting some suggested dabs on different parts of the tree just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Nothing too crazy. Alrighty guys, so I will show you mine one final time. As you can see, I put some gray on the tops of the leaves. Yours should look somewhat similar to this if you decided to add this step in there. Um, but like I said, that was the last step that I have for you guys with the painting. Uh, the only other thing that I like to tell people to do is to sign their painting somewhere, just so everyone knows that you had a great time and you are claiming this beautiful masterpiece to be your own. Um, so I just kinda like to pick a corner just like to add my initials right at the bottom somewhere and then you should be all done with your painting so I hope you guys had a really fun time painting this um, like I said this is one of my favorite ones to paint I think it looks really nice you can kind of hang this in any room of your house um, it's just a little fun painting to do all 
All right, guys, I hope you had a great time painting this. Um, make sure you check out all of our other paintings and feel free to share your final results of yours um, via either Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you take 